Oh, I gotta get up about five, make my make my lunch, and leave the door right at six thirty, and be here at six forty-five, and and we leave from here at seven. We don't come back till like seven fifteen, seven thirty. Twenty-eight kilometers from here. That's far. If we didn't have the young guys like us, we wouldn't. Uh, the road could have never be built. It's pretty hard. It's just pretty tiring on the arms, and I think it's pretty heavy. I uh, put an application and it was six months ago and six months ago today and I'm still here, still working. Good paying money and good paying job. It's gonna be actual all season road and I like to see uh, see everybody come home safely, no more walking across the ice. I see people fall through the ice and it's kind of dangerous when people are pulling a whole bunch of groceries across, especially in this, especially when you have to uh, use the boats going across the ice and people falling across and people going through, people traveling at night, especially with the little ones, especially with the babies and all that. It feels nice to uh, actually see the highway and actually be coming home. Well, the road wasn't supposed to be done till June 2019, but it's already going to be done. Okay. I hope I don't get laid off because I want to still work more. And barely any work. The only work we have is just the road. Right after that, there's probably not going to be nothing else. I just go look for a job in Winnipeg or Tony Bay or, or somewhere. Stick busy because I know there's not going to be any work. Work for a very long time. Yeah, like you keep on working. Construction and keeps you busy and keeps you motivated and keeps things off your mind. Mm, alcohol, could drink that. Ever since I got the job, I was mostly basically drinking every day. If I didn't have a job, I could have been started drinking every day. And yeah, it's, it's tough going to that stuff. That's probably one of the one of the toughest things. The day goes by fast, and you. Keep busy. When you're at home, it goes goes slow. But when you're out here, it goes time just goes quick. And I like to see the youth help home more and do more things for the youth. They're gonna learn how to have to step up when all the elders are gone. Mm. Yeah, they gotta learn how to start doing things and... Okay, we did all the, basically the whole road, finished the whole road. Freedom Road was being built and I just wanted to be a part of something. Sigerson came around and hired all the young guys, put us to work, and I took the opportunity. I showed up to work on time every day, and I just stuck with it. I mainly came to work every day just so we could have this freedom road for the children, so they could have more opportunities and not struggle like, like the older people. 
during the winter time there like we have elders and hauling groceries across the lake or walking across the lake in a blizzard sometimes. Just a lot of things that shouldn't happen. Just, it'll be a whole lot easier. It's a big relief. Hopefully people will come back to the reserve and they create more jobs and uh, make a better place to live around here. Because a lot of the people are struggling. One of my hopes is that they have like some sort of way to help the younger people with addictions and all that. Because there's a lot of people that are addicted to something around here that no one's helping them with. I honestly, I wanted to eventually have land out here and have a house and all that, but I just hope that there's more jobs and all that. One thing I'd like to say is that me and a lot of the guys out here are grateful for the opportunity to get the chance to work on Freedom Road, to become young operators at this age. Really proud of myself that I stuck to it and accomplished it. And like near last load there at the end of the day, I just stopped and looked, looked up and down the road. And I realized that we're done. The hard part's done. I got to drop the last load. Can't exactly explain the feeling that I felt, but the feeling that I never felt before. It felt good knowing that I stuck with it and stuck through it and was there at the very ending there. <laughs> had tears of joy there and the chief hugged me there. We had a few words. So just basically the one thing I'd like to thank was the opportunity to work for Sickness and Northern and have the opportunity to work on Freedom Road. And overall, it was a good day. Yeah, I'm super proud of my brother for working on the road. My brother JT, uh, he was one of the longest workers there. He was just super dedicated to his job on, at Freedom Road. He, um, you could tell that he was really passionate of finishing the road because of how tough it was to grow up in Shoal Lake. Shoal Lake 40 only has a school that goes up to grade eight, so, um, I became a boarding student, and uh, one of the toughest things about leaving home really young is I feel really separated from my community, and I feel like I don't really belong in the like this community either. You uh, you tend to miss out on both sides of everything. The 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 culture shock that you feel when you move here it's like you don't know how to act, how to talk. I was always scared of um, people thinking that I'm too too native or too rezzed out. And then when I go back to the res, people are like, why are you talking so white? I noticed in Kenora, if you're not white, you get treated differently, I guess. So, yeah. Some days it's just really hard being indigenous in like any sort of situation, I guess. And when you're in town going to school, like sure, your friends that are your age are with you, but a lot of them don't really make it throughout the year. Some leave school due to family problems. Some just hate going to school now because 
of the situation that we're in. Some get kicked out just because they find it's too hard. It's kind of sad, especially when you know that they could have done amazing things, but life, being a boarding student, is just too hard. Because some days I just can't get out of bed. I'd rather I'd drop out of school just to see my mom. But uh, one of the things that like really helped me out when it came to school and stuff was wrestling. Just helps me in sort of every kind of way, I guess. And like ever since I joined it in like grade nine, it's been like my favorite thing ever. I probably wouldn't really be going to school much if it weren't for wrestling. And my coach, he was like, no matter what, you deserve to be here. He um, brought me back to reality that like, you just gotta keep being tough no matter what you do. Whether if it's going back to Kenora for another week of school or a really tough wrestling match, you gotta just tough it out. Gave me a lot of like, stuff that I could use in my life as a person. I am trying to graduate this year. Keyword trying. I might be uh, doing something with my wrestling coach or I could become uh, a student coach. That's kind of what I want to do after high school. I pushed so hard to get somebody to coach wrestling. I was like super glad that we have a coach that we can trust. It's very understanding too, like talking to him about all the other struggles you have as an Indigenous student. Um, I remember one year, like, I fell through. So like, it's just so weird that that's our normal, you know? Like, falling through a lake and like, just getting up, walking home like it's normal. I'm so glad that we're not going to have to live like that when we're adults. It'll be a lot better, I think.